Hey everybody, we had another playoff series wrap up last night with the Edmonton Oilers finishing off the LA Kings in game number six. A very high scoring series between those two teams, but in the end, the Oilers offense won. They were able to outscore the Kings to get the six game victory. So they'll move on to round number two, where they will face off against the Vegas Golden Knights. That should be a spectacular matchup between those two teams. But let's take a look back on this Oilers King series. I'll give you my three stars and talk about the series as a whole. So as we said, the Oilers get the job done four games to two over the Kings in six games. And this was an extremely high scoring series with 45 total goals scored over the six games. Um, the Oilers end up outscoring LA 25 to 20 over the course of the series. And there were just a lot of pucks finding in the back of the net. Not great for goaltenders, but definitely great for offensive numbers and a lot of fun to watch. If you like high-paced running gun hockey with a lot of goals, this was the series for you. It was extremely exciting. Special teams did play a massive role here as the Oilers' power play was absolutely lethal. Over 50%, 9 for 16 on the power play for Edmonton in this series. And it's not even like they got a super high amount of power play opportunities. They just took advantage what seemed like almost every single time they went up a man. And uh, ultimately, it was just over 50%, 9 for 16, but some of those were really big goals and uh, that played a huge, huge role in the Oilers winning this series. Power play for LA wasn't bad, just could not match the Oilers' uh, output on the man advantage. They ended up going 7 for 21, you know, obviously 33% there. Um, still, despite having five more power play opportunities over the course of the series, ended up scoring two less power play goals than the Oilers. And again, it's just because of how absolutely ridiculous Edmonton's power play was in this series. Just absolutely lethal. And going forward, if you're going to beat the Edmonton Oilers, you either have to take virtually no penalties, which is obviously very tough to do, and there are going to be penalty calls and power play opportunities over the course of a playoff series, or you're going to have to find some way to stifle this Oilers power play. And, um, you know, that's going to be a huge task for Vegas coming up in round number two. Vegas's penalty kill wasn't particularly great against Winnipeg. If that continues, the Oilers are going to take complete advantage of that. And uh, it's going to become a big time battle for the Golden Knights to just stay out of the box and keep this Oilers power play off the ice as much as possible. As far as goaltending goes in this series, um, obviously uh, not spectacular numbers for either team's starting goalies. Um, but that's just always going to be the case when you have a series that is as high scoring as this one. Stuart Skinner. 3-2 and two record with an 890 save percentage and 3.43 goals against average, minus 1.1 goals saved above expected. Obviously, certainly not numbers that you would uh, put up on a plaque there for Skinner in this series, but ultimately, the Oilers scored more goals than the Kings, and that's what matters. And Skinner did have some solid saves when he needed to and, and did do enough, obviously, to win the series, but... At the end of the day, it was uh, it was not a superb performance by the Oilers goalkeeper. Do want to touch on Jack Campbell, though, because in game number four, he really saved Edmonton in that game. They were able to come back after Skinner gave up three goals in the first period. Oilers were down 3-0 to zero in the game. Jack Campbell comes in and is absolutely lights out the rest of the way for Edmonton. The Oilers end up being able to come back in the game, win at 5-4 in overtime. Campbell gets credit for the win. 964 save percentage for him. 1.18 goals against average. Only gave up one goal once he entered in the game in the second period. 
An incredible 2.4 goals saved above expected. This was not even a full game for Jack Campbell, and he had 2.4 goals saved above expected. Just an absolutely game-saving and possibly even series-saving performance for from Campbell in game number four. Edmonton ends up tying the series at two games apiece because of that win instead of going down 3-1 to the Kings. And honestly, Campbell's performance in that game very possibly could have saved the Oilers in this series. Phoenix Copley also did play a little bit on the LA side, but it was really in a mop-up duty in a game that the Kings were going to lose, so uh, I didn't bother to put him up there, but Jonas Corposalo was the main goaltender for LA in this series, and he really kind of did what he could. Uh, obviously, not enough to win, going two and four with an 892 save percentage, 3.77 goals against average, and 0.4 goals saved above expected. The statistics aren't great for Corposalo, but you really got to take into account the opportunities that the Oilers were getting and and he made some huge saves and it was a valiant effort for him at the end of the day though he gives up almost four goals a game save percentage under 900 and it certainly wasn't a a series stealing level of goaltending from Corpus big reason why Edmonton won however I do think it's really really interesting that he had a goal saved above expected that was actually positive despite a save percentage below 900 and giving up almost four goals a game you do not see that very often and I think that just flat out speaks to the huge number of high quality opportunities that the Oilers were getting and uh, I certainly would not put the, the blame here on Corpus Allo for the Kings losing this series. Didn't get a huge amount of help in front of him defensively. And uh, really just went out there and tried to do what he could, but it wasn't enough. My three stars of the series. This actually ended up being very easy to pick these three players. Uh, third star, Connor McDavid, obviously elite forward for the Edmonton Oilers. Three goals, seven assists, 10 points, minus one rating, and 27 shots on goal over the course of this series for McDavid. Obviously, with 10 points in six games, his output was phenomenal. A lot of those points did come on the power play, however. Uh, and I do think that Connor McDavid has another gear as far as being a dominant player that can single-handedly take over a series. I don't think we necessarily saw that in round one here. I do think he has another notch to go uh, to be playing at his absolute best, but he by no means was a disappointment and was still very good in the series. I just think that he wasn't the Oilers' best player in this series, and we'll talk about who the Oilers' best player was here in a minute. My number two star in the series, defenseman Evan Bouchard. What a coming out party for Bouchard in this series, especially offensively. Two goals, eight assists for 10 points, an even rating, and eight power play points for Bouchard. We talk about how absolutely ridiculous the Oilers' power play was in this series. They scored nine power play goals. Bouchard had a point on eight of those nine power play goals. He was the quarterback running the show out high, and he produced. And this was a huge series for Bouchard, put up a lot of points, played well for them, well over 20 minutes a game, was a really, really important player on that blue line for the Oilers, and uh, he's my second star of the series. My number one star, and who I believe was the best player For the Oilers, and in general in this series, the best player of this series was Leon Dreisaddle. Uh, Seven goals, which led the team, led this series. 11 points, led the team, led the series. Plus four rating, six even strength points. Uh, So a majority of his points did come at even strength. Added four assists in there. Uh, Just an absolutely incredible series for Leon Dreisaddle. And like I said, he was the best player in this series. He was the best player for the Oilers, led the team in goals and points, and uh, he is, to me, clearly the number one star.
So the Edmonton Oilers for the second year in a row defeat the LA Kings in round number one. This time they do it in six games instead of seven. Leon Drysaddle with a monster series. Lots of goals for both sides here. And uh, at the end of the day, the Oilers just were able to outscore LA and they'll be moving on to face Vegas in round number two. It was a lot, lot of great hockey, a lot of fun to watch between these two teams. Um, obviously, just an absolute running gun style of play. And uh, it was a fun series, but the Oilers get it done. And we'll see what they can do against the Golden Knights coming up next round. 